anterior superior portal is through the anterior aspect of the rotator interval, anterior to the supraspinatus, basically right over the biceps. Our anterior midglenoid portal is through the rotator interval adjacent to the supraspinatus, ensuring that we can get all the way down to our six o'clock position right behind our anterior midglenoid portal, you'll see our subscapularis. So these portals are pretty well positioned. Now, there's two ways to placate posterior inferior. One is we stitch it. So we can look down there and we can say, this is probably about six o'clock. So our tear extends slightly beyond six o'clock. So there's two ways to handle this. One is Plicate here and proximally because this labrum is obviously not going to take a stitch. So what we can do is we can get our pinch tuck here perpendicular, heading down, just saying hello to the axillary nerve, and then coming back in without taking a huge bite. There's no way that our axillary nerve is going to be in there. We've tried to get axillary nerves with this stitch in cadavers and we're never able to do so. However, you know, use caution down there. Here's our pinch and then we can probably also get a reasonable pinch tuck through this labrum, at which time we would send our shuttle through and pass a stitch. You can see that we're just above our tear. We'll pass a simple stitch through there. And this is our standard shuttling technique. We come in through the front, grab the end of our shuttle. Now that's a simple stitch, which is fine. You can use a mattress or you can use a figure of eight. And now we won't tie this right now because I don't want to do anything that's gonna tighten up the shoulder and compromise my access anterior or inferior. And then we'll tie that at the end of the case, so we'll just take it out of the cannula, get those out of the way, because we don't want them in the way for our later shuttling. All right, so that's one way of plicating down the back. The second way is to look down at that and say, I need an anchor. How are you gonna get an anchor in there? One way would be to try to get it in through here and say, all right, I'm gonna get an anchor there. That's uh, gonna be tough to do due to your angle. Now, our seven o'clock portal, it's about four centimeters down from the posterior lateral corner of the acromion. Anywhere in here is pretty safe. That is a more reasonable angle that you can use to put an anchor right here if you need to. It's a small percutaneous approach. You don't put a cannula through here. We'll just make a tiny little skin stab and let's get a flexible Y knot through our seven o'clock portal. So it has a bit of a curve on it, which I think you can appreciate if we spin it around. So there's our spot. We'll get up onto the articular edge. This will bottom out. We'll tap it on in. And that will also bottom out. This is where I'll take that little snap and put it right on the end of my inserter. So my inserter's on the bone. You can see on the screen, and the snap is out here, and this way I'll know just how far I need to pull before this thing sets. And then I say, okay, in case I've lost track, can I, can I stop pulling now or do I not? And as you get more comfortable with these, we'll recognize you want probably, you know, I don't know the exact distance, but it's usually about a finger breadth. And when it locks down at that point, you can say, all right, I'm happy with my fixation. I'm gonna tie this one down, because I'm done with that one, and then we're gonna pass this one through the tissue in the back. So in order to do that, we're gonna shuttle. We're gonna suture from the back. So we're gonna take our inferior labral side stitch out the top. We're gonna to get our needle on the side of the limb that we want it to come out on. We'll set the tip of the needle onto, at the point where we want it to come out from under the labrum. We call this a rehearsal. You'll see that my index finger is at the junction between the spectrum and the dry dock. So this tip is basically an extension of my index finger. So now with muscle memory, I'm sitting here and I can say to myself, I need to get back to this point. So at which point I'll pronate, I'll go down and I'll get some capsule and some labrum. In this case, we won't be doing a pinch tuck and we'll come right back to where we came. When you feed these shuttles, you don't wanna really yank them through the shuttle. You wanna send them through and take up the slack with your grasper. And we should have fairly smooth sailing with our post limb here. You just tug on the post limb to confirm which one it is. We use the SMC. I'll set that knot down where I want it to sit and pull backwards and advance the labrums. And once we get it to where we want it, we'll put three half inches generally on every limb. 
and we'll watch that knot right there. And you can see that that's a square knot. We're going to go to the anterior superior portal now. We've got our good six, even 630 anchor there. Now we want to get up here anteriorly. So the next one we're going to put in is going to be a double loaded 1.8 millimeter Y knot. We'll take the same curved inserter. So we're coming down through here. You can see that you want that cannula in probably at least two ribs because a lot of this procedure is done this down here. That's why these dry docks are so helpful is that they tend not to fall out. So now we'll come down here and we'll say, all right, where do we want to be? We don't want to be down here. We want to be at least up on the corner or within two millimeters onto the face of that corner. Again, we've got our curved guide, which gives us an excellent angle to get down very far inferior on the shoulder. And we're going to put our next anchor in. So we need the, the drill for the 1.8. Now at this point, my left hand is doing the procedure. There's nobody that's going to distract me, nobody that's going to get me to move that left hand at all. It's just staring at the screen, and it'll bottom out. I'll say, okay, I like that. We'll put our snap here, so we'll pull on the outside. Okay, so we're pulling pretty good now. We can pull this whole specimen, and it's pretty well set down there, and now we've got double loaded suture anchor in. And you can see that the black one appears to be distal and the blue one appears to be proximal. We'll want to make note of that and pass the black one first and the blue one second. So again, it's a shuttling technique where we'll come in through the back cannula. We'll pick our inferior side suture, the black, labral side limb, which is this one, from inferior to all the other sutures. So these three are going this way and this one is coming from inferior out the back. And now we'll get our 45 degree to the right. For a standard bank heart, I don't do a pinch tuck. I will get a good, generous helping of capsule and labrum. And just like we did last time, we'll come down and we'll rehearse. And we'll say, OK, I want to end up here, in which case I'm going to come down inferior. We don't want to be above. We don't want to be doing this. We want to be advancing this capsule as far up as we can. It's a nice fine motor motion that enables us to keep control while still exerting a good amount of pressure here. And then I'll work my stitcher through right where I came from. We're going to come through and we're going to, again, we're going to feed our shuttle. Now I'm going to tie. So in order to tie, I'm going to want to get these other sutures out of the way. So we'll pluck these blue ones out the back so that my anterior mid glenoid portal only has one stitch in it. And then again, to establish my post, I know that the post is this one here, because it just came out, and we're done. Now we'll take our crochet hook and we'll put another one in. So at this point, I'm looking at these two and I say, I want this limb here to go through the labrum there. So I'll leave that in the posterior portal and pull the other one out. And we'll get our same 45 to the right and repeat. Now I'll look at this and I'll say, I've got two anchor, two sutures here. I don't, I don't want them right on top of each other like so. I'd like to get a little bit of spread in between. I've got a couple of options. If I don't like my tension here, I can get a bigger bite along the same line and pull this suture up and over the top of the first one in patients with more significant laxity. This patient, I like the amount of tension I have right here. You can see that it's pretty taut. In which case, I just want another pass. I want another point of fixation here. The first stitch is the one that advances it the most. Subsequent stitches aren't going to do as much advancing. Down, through, and out. Okay, and then we'll tie this next one. You could certainly argue that moving your way up, you could bang in more singles on the way up. And then it would look, you know, one, two, we'd probably put in at least two more anchors, if not three more, depending on the extent of the tear. But every four or five millimeters or so, we'd work our way up. All right, thanks everybody.